Welcome to the first look at Twisted and Twilight, where I'll be taking control of Arahan and Naestra. The Sisters of Twilight are the first Legendary Lord slot to be represented by two characters, and this is reflected by the contrasting decisions you can make in terms of upgrades, or position, and strategy. The Sisters of Twilight play as the tip of the Azrai Spear, chopping away the corruption that has begun to rot the branches of the extensive deep roots that connect all the magical forests. Your first goal will be to heal the Witchwood, a long abandoned glade in the heart of Nagaroth that finds itself overgrown with both Druki and Greenskins alike. It may be wise to pick a side until you're able to cultivate deep roots in the Witchwood. While promoting insurgents in the Dark Elf infested Nagarond may seem like the strongest choice, can you ever really trust a Greenskin? Well, I guess there's a first time for everything. We fight for the forest. Thankfully, the sisters start with a unit of great stag knights, elite cavalry which excel at intercepting and puncturing robust formations of heavy infantry. Their high charge bonus makes them perfect for engineering gaps to expose weaker backline units. Whilst already well equipped to crack open armor in normal combat, their speed ensures the wisest generals will be able to apply their talents to the highest priority areas on the battlefield. The spell singer you start with is a beast too. The magical forests scattered around the four continents of the New World can be tackled in any order you please, but the Witchwood makes for an ideal start, thanks to the opportunity to heavily influence the progression of your dark elven brothers and sisters across the campaign map. Now the orcs are tearing around Nagaroth doing my work for me, and I have a firmer grip on the Witchwood Glade. After an encounter that allowed me to bury fallen Azrai, I was able to cheaply muster a significant splinter force of dryads and send them on the hunt for a few old friends that you may already be acquainted with. And I've sent my great stag knights along for the ride. Whilst Orion's camp will be familiar to Imric players, Prince Orion himself has vanished. His band have become drunk and feral in his absence. I had to subdue them for the greater good. <laughs> After claiming ownership of a new glade, you'll begin to hear whispers from the forest spirits. These encounters will ultimately sow the seeds of your own legacy, as well as significantly impacting the empires of the many factions that have become intertwined with the magical forests over the ages. In this playthrough, I often found myself navigating the fierce differences that divide the elven races, and eventually I found my relationship with Imric, the High Elf Dragon Tamer, was deteriorating. I lacked the foresight to avoid stationing my very flammable Dryad Legions next to the most powerful fire-breathing dragons in the New World. If you played Wood Elves in the first Total War Warhammer, you'll notice an extensive rework of the Azrai playstyle. For starters, Amber is no longer gained from controlling territory, and is instead awarded for healing forests. It can be spent on the 10 new technologies for the Wood Elves. I'll use the Amber gain from healing my next magical forest to learn the wisdom of the Cypress, which will add fire resistance to my tree spirit units, as well as further fortifying my melee infantry's vigor. As the Handmaidens of Ariel, the sisters have a special relationship with Daith, the master smith of Vol's Anvil. This relationship will grant them access to unique items and powerful upgrades to your favorite equipment. Here, on turn 46, I'm able to double down on a pivotal piece of loot stronger buffs available on a temporary basis. And the mighty Azrai don't often need to waste time trekking across seas and wastelands where their talents are wasted. From turn 10, the network of deep roots across the globe allows Wood Elf armies to teleport huge distances to protect and restore glades far and wide. Their regrown campaign playstyle, which carries over to their endeavors in the Old World's Mortal Empires campaign map, is a far cry from their more defensive beginnings in Warhammer 1 allowing lightning strikes and awkward introductions on glades worldwide. I sent the sisters themselves to make contact with the Azur Zalariel, who makes for perhaps your most compatible ally within the higher echelons of the Azur. Her demands may not be so compatible. In truth, I've been specking up for this for a while, dishing out powerful equipment from the forge to Ariel and my Spellsinger. Without spoiling any more of the campaign ahead, you will need as many options in your arsenal and as many allies as you can muster with a despicable new force 
stalking you in the new world. After hunting it down, the sisters can access an ultra-aggressive forest dragon mount, making them a fearsome opponent in most situations. Not only can the sisters rain death from this beast with their divinely wrought bows, this mount makes them fearsome in close combat. With their conjoined destiny, should either sister come close to death, the spirit of one flows into the other. In game, this acts as a safety net, giving you the confidence to take higher risk, higher reward engagements. The versatility doesn't stop there, with the sisters able to switch between the Talon of Dawn and Talon of Dusk. That's armor sundering single projectiles or debilitating poison projectiles as the situation dictates. In this playthrough, I've relied on lumbering dryads to fortify my squishy archers, but ambitious Wood Elves players can reach a grander potential using fragile but fast moving units to lay traps. For example, these Glade Riders are a cheaper alternative to the Wild Riders, allowing the option to harass and pressure an opponent's backline in larger numbers without breaking the bank. Another powerful new option is the Spellweaver Lord, who can project stealth onto other units within an AoE. Last but not least, we're bringing Zotes, an anti-large and armor-piercing monstrous infantry unit capable of not only disruption, but also fortification via the law of life. As your powers are peaking, you will encounter increased resistance from the more twisted spirits of the forest. Ratmen are ever present throughout the campaign, and oh, here's another abomination, the ingenious master mutator of Clan Molder, Throt the Unclean is a malignant influence, aligning with and empowering the darkest spirits of the forest. With each glade saved, Throt's thirst for magical energy heightens, and a lifetime of mutating experiments has had one or two effects on Throt. most excited to see next? Let us know in the comments.